Hi, my name is Rod Hughes. I'm a historic bladesmith and I'm based in the Surrey Hills. I spend my life making beautiful things like this, which is a replica of a Viking blade. And I make things for museums and collectors and films. This is my forge, which I built. Um, almost to do the kind of work that I do, you have to have really strange facilities. So you have to work in charcoal, you have to work in clay, um, and so you have to build your own space really and it helps me being out here to imagine and get myself into the mindset of that original maker and this is why my forge is as quirky as it is but uh, I like it and um, yeah it's cool. So the main question I get asked is how do you get into making swords? Well I did a, a, a course, I saw a course in casting bronze using ancient technique. I'd worked with bronze before, I'd worked in engineering, but I'd never made metal and I really felt like making metal. So I did this course and um, most people were making nice simple things like little pendants and so on. Uh, I made something which was much more elaborate, uh, about three parts. And um, this is the thing that I made. I made a, a three-part snake and it's a snake with a tail and a back plate and this is all made from beeswax all in one cast all in a clay mold what I didn't know was it's impossible to do that first time round but it worked and it then took me about three years to try and get back to the same level of competence as uh, I achieved on that course with beginner's luck but that's what got me into making swords. I love the fact that weapons change the world. Weapons changed nations, they changed empires. The difference between one weapon and another and having that weapon or not having it meant the difference between being conquered or being the conqueror. What I personally like is looking at an original artifact, looking at something that is a thousand, two thousand, three thousand years old and trying to understand how that maker made that piece. And then what I try and do if I'm making a replica is to breathe the same kind of life. I try to use the same technique, use the same materials. Uh, sometimes I will make materials from rock just in order to have a very precious piece of metal that I then shape into my piece. This is a medieval broadsword. Uh, this particular blade has uh, a Damascus pattern on it and what that means is that the pattern in it which you see is made from the metal itself so rather than it being added or painted on uh, each stripe each little mark uh, is made because it because of the steel and the iron and what we do in this particular one uh, this is a technique where we make bars and we make bars of Stripy steel is the best way to describe it. Layer of iron, layer of steel. We then stretch that out and make that into a bar. And we make, in this case, three of these. And then what we do is we heat them and we twist them all at the same point. And then we take it down and then we twist it again. And the clever bit is to get in, getting all the twists in the same place. And then we forge that together and then we put a wrap. And what the wrap is, is basically a huge piece of, of steel all the way around the blade and that's forged and, and this piece of steel is, is itself is folded a little bit like Japanese steel so it's folded upon fold upon fold so that all the edge goes sideways so that when we finally cut into it it gives this amazing uh, watered silk pattern that you see. This, this is a, a lump of iron ore. This is the same thing that our ancestors would have dug up in the Viking period or the Iron Age period. And what we do with this is we break it up, we roast it, get all the sulphur out of it and it starts breaking it up. And then we build a, a huge chimney and the chimney uh, we fill with iron ore and charcoal and we get a fire going, we blast air through the, the retort. In, in doing that it gets up to the kind of temperatures that are needed to melt iron and steel, about 1200 degrees. Something like this probably take about three or four blooms so you can imagine the amount of work that we have to put in to 
duplicate these and the amount of work that our ancestors had to do with nothing like the kind of resources that we have. I always marvel at the skill levels that our ancestors had. Even today, trying to achieve anything nearly as good as they made using modern materials is very, very difficult.